This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. You know, you're really beautiful. And a woman that looks like that has to have her own special scent. Oh, thank you. Maybe, maybe you could tell me what you think of this scent. Hmm, I like that. This, this may be the best of all. Oh, you dirty boy, you! Oh, oh! Donald, I thought you were a gentleman. Hmm. You can't say I didn't try. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We are free. And we're going to review perfume today. Let me just take this uh, <laughs> stray jacket and turn it into something more pleasant. A track jacket. Empire by Donald Trump, you guys. We will be reviewing Empire. Has anybody tried this one? Now, <laughs> look how the lights reflect so nicely. Little bars and chains. So, um, believe it or not, there's a range of Trump perfumes. And I thought, no better day than uh, the presidential inauguration <laughs> and initiation of the presidency of Joe Biden. No better day than today to try this. So, uh, funny story. It made its way to me through Jamaica for some reason. I do not know why. But, guess what? Uh, it started off all across the world. It, can, it, it, it kept going in and out of the States and everywhere. It's so bizarre. This thing is so bizarre. It was all over the place. Um, and, but the funny thing is, it is made in the USA. So you got to give it that uh, up there in this really tiny little snippet here. You can see if we can zoom it. I'm not so sure. It's really tiny. It's up there. So it's Empire. Now, the Empire collapsed because it's over. But let's try it, shall we? Hold on. Has anybody ever smelled this one? It has a very heavy lid, heavy glass bottle. The Hmm. The, um, it's like a smoked black color and then the actual logo is on a piece of, it's a, it's like a gold name printed on a piece of plastic. But you can see how thick the glass is at the bottom. So, and then we have the really heavy lid with, uh, I guess this is Trump's uh, brand. Or, or something that's supposed to look very rich, like for generations and generations. It, it has been what it has been. So, how does the empire smell? Um, top notes are apple. <laughs> Actually, it just has linear notes. Tonka bean, apple, amber, spicy mint, tea, musk, orange blossom, and jasmine. And it came out in 2015. So this perfume came out before uh, the actual, you know, before Donald started running for, for president and all that stuff. So this is kind of like a... And there are three of them. Different fragrances. So this is kind of... Um, a time before time, if you may. I wonder if any new perfumes are going to come out after this, after 2021. But, okay. You know, it's quite generic in the opening notes. Uh, it... I don't get the apple, really. Uh, and it has a lot of that... Um, panty dropper type of smell that a lot of perfumes have uh, that are kind of targeted more t 
to the ma male audience and they have that like an aggressive opening um quite chemical and dare i say metallic now the amber and the musk it's a synthetic musk it kind of kicks in and tries to warm up that metallic opening and it does because i have sprayed it here a couple of hours ago because i wanted to dry down it does warm up a little uh, not too much though it, it does stay metallic all through and through however i gotta hand this to it uh it doesn't have that screechy pepperiness that a lot of fragrances that are in this range and this type of uh, smell olfactory family, it doesn't have that um, peppery screechiness that a lot of them do have. It's it's void of of, of that peppery tone. Um, but <laughs> it kind of smells mm, like you want to, like you're trying to smell expensive, but you're not because the ingredients are not expensive. The ingredients smell like they have been um, cheaply reproduced in uh, a laboratory. They're, they're quite synthetic. So how do you convey a feeling of an empire? Because I mean, I'm talking about this without shade. <laughs> it's hard to not, but it's kind of hard. What are you gonna do? I mean, if you call your perfume empire, um, you don't put the name on a plastic plaque. I mean, you, you put a little bit more effort in and the bottle is fine. Honestly, it's really heavy and like this golden metal little ring here is also good. I mean, it's, it's okay, but it's the plaque that, uh, listen, we're gonna do a little bit of ASMR. I'm gonna kind of uh, tap it on the mic so you can hear. I mean, you can hear the, the glass and then anyway, but so if this is supposed to smell of empire, it's kind of an illusion. Uh, it's kind of giving off the impression that um, it would really want to, but it can't. And uh, that being said, it's not unpleasant though. It's just enough entertaining to to have some sort of presence, but it doesn't lure you in enough to want to know more about it. Uh, it 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 could be a one night stand type of smell, you know. And it is. Elfactive Stories says, it sounds fake. <laughs> uh, fake news, fa fake empire, fake perfume. I Listen, it's real. It's not fake. It, it, it's real, but it doesn't live up to its name. So if you're going to call a perfume empire, put in it qualities that would sustain a concept of an empire, the ideology of it. How would an empire smell? Because if your empire smells like this, then you're not an emperor. Then you're not an emperor. Then you're the type of guy who kind of poses, is a poser, but isn't, doesn't own an empire, really. And so I think it's the type of guy that uh, typically would wear this perfume and would be in the ladies very much so, you know, going out clubbing at night or just in a bar, you know, vibing and then getting to know the ladies, you know, a smooth talker, but there's like not a lot, you know, in Italy there's this say, they say, um, oh, you're all uh, smoke, but there is nothing baking in the oven. So, uh, tutto fumo e niente arrosto. So it means all smoke, but no, um, arrosto is a, uh, what you might call it? It's like, 
well, there's no roast in the oven. You ain't roasting nothing, but there's a lot of smoke there. So now, I ain't saying this is bad. I'm saying call it a different name. Be honest about it. If you give it the proper name, then it lives up to its name. So if you're going to live up to your name, you need to be honest about that name and about what contents you're delivering to the table. If the contents you're delivering to the table are extremely synthetic, I'm not saying this thing doesn't last and I'm not saying that it's unpleasant, but if you have smelled perfumes for many, many years and you're really into them and you really, they always tell you a story, uh, you, you do realize, you do smell out that, okay, there's something, it's pleasant, but it ain't expensive. Now, maybe we could ask ourselves the question, well, does an empire have to be expensive? I think it does. I think it does because an emperor within an empire, I mean, needs to, has all encompassing power. So unless, well, you see, this is interesting. Maybe there's a little subtle line to be, analyzed here. You see, the perfume is not called the emperor. It's called empire. Hmm. Now, not everybody in an empire is rich. Not everybody in an empire is treated fairly. Not everybody in an empire can afford health insurance, health service, education. So the empire encompasses also poverty, doesn't it? And an empire also, well, to be an emperor, you need your subject, your loyal subject. You need somebody really close to you. But then an em within an empire, some empires also, unfortunately, have slaves. And there's a lot of inequality. Within an empire, you're probably going to have a big chunk of the population wanting to emulate their emperor. So, but they would not have the budget to really live the life of an emperor. And this is what this perfume smells of. So it is an empire, but not for the rich. It's the smell of the poor within that empire. Um, of the poor who are blinded by the lights, uh, by the shimmering real gold that the emperor wears. And but they cannot obtain that gold, so they take the next best next best thing, which is a product that emulates the reflection of that gold, but not the gold itself, just a reflection from a distance. And that distance is far enough for the emperor to never have to actually smell his subjects because they can't wash every day. It's a soft perfume. It uh, stays very close to the skin. It dries down very quickly. Uh, the opening wants to be a shower, but it's not a grower because it stays very close to the skin, very subdued. It's pleasant. I repeat for the fifth time, don't come for me saying I just want to bash it. No, it is a pleasant fragrance. But there's a conceptuality, you guys, that goes with everything, that goes with how you design a bottle, how you design the name of your perfume, uh, how you conceive the layers of it, what message do you want to convey with it. This is not a perfume that smells of the emperor's empire. It doesn't. This smells of an interpretation of it, a reflection of the light that the emperor shines, and so the subjects can afford this, but not the real thing. So perhaps it's, perhaps it's really genius because this is really honest. This is an empire. <laughs> this is an empire smell because it's not the emperor's smell. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me read a couple of the comments. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Dantism says, Melania left the chat. <laughs> Robert says, what? <laughs> Jam says, Aisha, the bottle looked like Aromatics Elixir. <laughs> I'm Louise laughing. 
Melly says, here we go. Oh my God. Monica voice. I knew it. Antigone says, Aisha says, very symbolic. Uh, Christian, hi, how are you doing? Uh, says, uh, we could have guessed it. Yeah, but nobody guessed it. <laughs> Melly's laughing. D uh, David says, oh. Jack says, oh my God. David says, my, my. Lucas is laughing. Debbie is laughing. Mike is LOLing. David says, God, um, uh, Akim Husni, hey, how you doing, sweetie? Welcome to the chat. Hey, Deko, Malaysia joining the fashion bunker. Welcome, 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 welcome. Aisha says, no, I did not know this existed. Yes, Donald Trump has three perfumes out. Empire being the most riveting of the three. Um, Audrey says, brilliant. Thank you, Audrey. I'm Louise says, bars and chains. <laughs> I'm Louis. I'm Louis laughing. Oh my God! Says Robert. Says Cha. Jam says Ew. Donald Trump perfume. Oh dear Lord. Says stupid lover. Melly says I can't stop laughing. Fred says you won't find that in Germany. Ha 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 ha. Fred says. Um, David says oh the irony. Aisha says Trump perfume. That means something very funny in the UK. What does it mean in the UK? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at Walmart you can find it, says Mike. Uh, brilliantly done, Jacob, says Letty. Thank you so much, Letty. Jack says, does it smell like corruption? No, it's not that strong. It can't go that far. No. Debbie says, it was on clearance in 2016. Ooh, the shade. Jam says, uh, I can't read that comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. David says, Jacob is fantastic. Thank you so much. Caleb says, wow, I'm shocked it made it here in the U.S. But it had to make up circles around it. Anyway, complicated. Uh, Melly says, no, never, ever would ever try it, LOL. You see, it's going to smell lovely, isn't it, says Audrey. Haven't smelled it, couldn't care less for it, says David. Donism says, the atomizer spritz a lot of juice. It does. <laughs> The bottle looks as cold as Trump, says Melly. Patrick says, I picture the scent is, a, uh, is akin to a dumpster fire. Aisha says, the notes sound nice. I like the sound of apple. Uh, but I don't get the apple in the opening notes. Like, that's the... I don't get the apple, really. Like, he really released a fragrance, says Olfactive Stories. For real? Three fragrances. And probably more to come now that he's out of a job. Uh, the empire now smells like a downfall, says Christian. Yes, Gurcharan says, a real empire would smell of war and greed. That's a good one. Fact of story says, hi to everybody. Uh, Melly says, I would think it's aggressive, definitely. And Louis says, it looks like a bottle of perfume you can find at TJ Maxx. Yeah, it does have a little bit of that uh, vibe. Oh, honey, it still looks better than a lot of YouTuber perfumes out there. Bottles, bottle designs from YouTube perfume reviewers. <laughs> Some, not all. <sighs> the shade has been thrown. Who produced the fragrance? Debbie wants to know. Uh, well, it was made in the United States of America. Okay, it was made by uh, Parlux Fragrances. LLC. Really? Really? Parlux. Oh my god, it's so tiny, you guys. Yeah. Parlux. P-A-R-L-U-X. Can somebody Google it and tell us what they're all about and what other fragrances they produced? Audrey says, what are you wearing? I am wearing a Jeremy Scott. So this is an American designer. Collaboration with Adidas, though. Uh, it is... Uh, it is a jacket that he conceived. It's a stray jacket, actually. It's a classic Adidas, um, like, track top, but transformed into a stray jacket, so it's full of these belts. And then, actually, the arms, when you pull them, you have these locks here and there, and then you kind of tie them to the sides. Uh, here's... <laughs> I can't show it. Wait. There, here's one lock. And then the other one is on the other side. So, it's a it's an editorial piece. Uh, that sums it up right there, says Melly. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, what are you wearing? Audrey says, Trump. Oh my god, the shade. <laughs> I'm wearing Trump the perfume. I'm wearing uh, Empire, actually. Oh, so cheeky, says Robert. Uh, <clears throat> Akim says, he might as well just put more effort if he's going to name it Empire. Right, that's what I thought too, but as I was analyzing it with you guys, I started thinking, well, actually, it does smell of Empire because it doesn't smell of Emperor. The Empire also has a lot of subjects, and a lot of them don't have any money, so... Gurchanan has a good point. Is there a fragrance named Democracy? We would have to Google that. I'm not so sure. But maybe there's no perfume named Democracy. But real Democracy smells really good. Christian says, not on the same plate with Trump. <laughs> what? What plate? Um, the name of the perfume should be Scam. Oh, stupid lover, the shade. Um... MK, hi, how are you doing? Welcome to the chat. The notes are promising, but I'm afraid the scent will turn out as cheap as the bottle, which looks like a cheaper modern version of the old uh, Sagamore by Lancome. I mean, as I said, it's not the most expensive glass because you see it does have those kind of little dents in it, but it is a thick one because at the bottom, it's very heavy. It is substantial, like the, it has heft. You gotta hand it to to you know to it for for that, and the lid is is a very very it's a full on chunky piece of of resin. It's very very heavy. It's not hollow, um, like it's it's full on plastic, and it's very very heavy. So, like when you, you see you know how plastic would just like kind of lay there. This one really like falls in, and then you click it in. ASMR. And then you got the insignia of the empire. Where is it? Um. Oh, Tonya. Tonya J says, says Fool's Gold. That's a good name. That's a good name. That's a good name for this one. That's a good name for this one. I wish I had a, a Sharpie or something to write it in gold underneath. Fool's gold. Um, Fred says, yes, that's what I meant with being a crowd pleaser. So his uh, sheeps will get it and he makes the cash. You said it. I read it. <laughs> Miranda says, far away enough so that he doesn't have to smell his subjects. Wow. Hmm. He has one fragrance called Success. How sad, I'm Louis says. Lucas says, The Art of the Smell. Oh my god, Lucas. <laughs> yeah. The Art of the Smell. Is that a deal? Do we change the name to The Art of the Smell? Deal? Uh, Rich Mitch, impeachment for him. <laughs> Love it. Impeachment for him is a good one. Um, yeah, okay, give me some more ideas. What would you rename it, knowing now the ingredients and knowing the conceptuality of the smell? Um, Richmond says, part of the golden uh, toilette line. Oh my god, the golden toilet line. Ooh, child. Oh my gosh. Amira says, hi everyone. Hey, Amira, welcome to the chat. Jam says, hi, Amira, everybody. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hmm. Uh, Antigone says, actually, the brand is American. They ended the cooperation because of his racist comments. I read now, but not sure if that is true. The owner is a Muslim and felt offended by Trump's comments. So I guess this is a rarity. <laughs> Get it while it lasts. <laughs> um, but look, I love how the light, I mean, you see the little like bar reflection of the, of the, the bars reflecting on the bottle from the light, from the spotlights. Oh, the symbolism of it all. Richmond says he could release a small hand cream. <laughs> and Richmond is on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Debbie is just done. Debbie, Debbie is like, is she had enough for four years? She's just call it loser. <laughs> Jack says very symbolic for Trump to try and make plastic seem like gold for the plaque. Yeah. 
Oh my God, I'm Louis. Le Tiny Hands by Trump. Lucas says, Jacob, overall, what do you think about these celebrity perfumes? Uh, oh my God, that it, Lucas, that was such indirect shade you just threw there about these celebrities. So basically to you, Trump is a celebrity. Okay, you went there. <laughs> um, yeah, what do I think about celebrity perfumes? I think they're mostly tragic, uh, really, really poor quality. I know some, there are exceptions. I know a lot of you like Sarah Jessica Parker's <laughs> Lovely, or even, what else, you know, Covet? What was her first one? Covet, maybe? Uh, Stash. Uh, I'm not a fan of, none of either one of those. Um, I have two Dida Fontis perfumes, very fascinating, uh, but uh, I might review those as well, if you're interested. Um, oh, the Budget Luxurist just joined and became a member. Thank you so much, Budget Luxurist, for joining uh, and becoming a member of uh, the Fashion Bunker. Thank you, thank you. By the way, guys, we are filming live, so that's why I'm reading the chat. And uh, so for, th for those of you who are watching this video later on, uh, know that uh, I do live streams a lot and I always review with my lovely viewers. There you go, Budget Luxurist. Welcome to the Fashion Bunker. And um, so consider subscribing to my channel and uh, or becoming a member or joining me on Patreon, Super Jacob All Spelled Together. There's a lot to be seen there as well. A lot of videos that are available there that are not even on YouTube. Uh, Gurchanan says, from Parlux. So Parlux is the manufacturer of Trump's empire. That sounded weird. Uh, global licensee for pop culture icons, fashion houses, and lifestyle brands, including Vince Camuto, Kenneth Cole, Jason Wu, Tommy Bahama, or Bahama, Bahama, Sofia Vergara, Paris Hilton, amongst others. Cha. Madonna Fitzgerald says, I feel like Donald Trump is the most hated president in history. Lucas, uh, oh my god, olfactive stories, eau de defeat. Not feet, but a defeat. <laughs> because it doesn't smell like feet. Rich Mitch, no more years, anti-aging cream. Oh my god, yeah, that's a good one too. David says, Madonna truth or dare is good. Yes, that one is good. I agree. But Madonna discontinued it. She wasn't making enough money from it. Jam says, if I was buying a perfume that makes Paris Hilton and Trump perfume, I would turn away. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fred says, Jeremy's also the, uh, for the Germans, a joke, just a clown. Aw. Jeremy Scott, you mean, the designer. I love Jeremy Scott. I do like Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker. I heard uh, she fell out with Narciso Rodriguez over that fragrance. Really? Why? I, I didn't know the story. I would have to Google that. Uh, which perfume would Trump wear in your opinion? Lucas asks. I do not know. <sighs> he has not the type of taste that I would consider taste. Now, a lot of you watching me for the first time that maybe found my video because you Google Trump, you're gonna think, look who's talking, the crazy guy wearing the crazy jacket. I don't always wear crazy stuff like this, obviously. So, um, I'm very capable of dissecting style and analyzing it and understanding when is the time to be austere, when is the time to be kooky, when is the time to have fun with your friends, when is the time to dress up all serious. So, just if you're going to be shady about that, just put it to the side. It won't work on me. Now, having said that, I do not know what he would wear. However, what I would recommend him to try, um, I, I, I would recommend, I think, and I, I don't really, and this is you guys, I don't even want to be shady. I don't care. Like, I just thinking as what I've seen in these past years, uh, oh, who, stupid Lover has become a member. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for becoming a member, Stupid Lover. Thank you. Um, I would recommend something not too warm because he has a tendency of overheating. You know, he, he's a very zesty character, right? So uh, something soothing and calming. I, I would try to counter the tantrums with... Um, a soothing scent. Does that make any sense to you guys? Um, um, 
I would recommend... This is going to sound really funny to you, but I would recommend something funny. Uh, simple. As simple as possible. Here's a little scoop for you. One of the next perfumes I will be reviewing. This is what I would recommend him to wear. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's a soothing, it's the smell of the cream in perfume form. It's the Nivea Eau de Toilette. So that's a little scoop for you guys. That's coming up um, on the weekend. So that's something that, uh, it's a soothing, calming type of, you know, the smell of the cream. Nothing over the top, nothing overpowering. It's just clean. It's, it's relatively simple and it's supposed to be soothing. Or anything that has like a lot of tea in it. By the way, you know, there's tea listed in this one, but I'm thinking more herbal teas, you know, like sage, uh, mint. Well, actually, there's mint in here. <laughs> there's mint in here. <laughs> but this is not soothing and cooling at all. I mean, it can be when it dries down. It stays so close to the skin that it turns into something that it, it does have a soothing property, but it's so artificial at the core. It's so synthetic at the core that you can't really fall into the soothing properties of the tea and the mint because it just constantly screeches. There's always that synthetic musk in there that uh, is really cheaply done so you could put all the tea you want in here and all the mint you want it just ain't gonna go there you know it's not gonna sue you need something more natural more refreshing now the Nivea perfume is also synthetic but we're gonna review that in another video but I would recommend it to him because it's simple it simplifies things it puts things you know it flattens them out a little bit it's just okay calm the f down calm down that's kind of the fragrance I think I would recommend him to wear. Aisha says, he said uh, she copied his perfume in the pink bottle. Oh, Narciso about Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, I see. That's the shade. Oh, super chat. Thank you so much, Robert, for the super chat. So sweet of you. Thank you. Heart to you. Heart to you. Yeah. So, guys, I mean, what can I tell you? It's a very... It's... It's a concept, and to me, on this day, on the day in which Joe Biden becomes president of the United States of America, uh, I found it very symbolic to review a perfume like this, I, I think. And um, coincidentally, it arrived exactly on this day, and I, because I, I was having my doubts, like whether or not, okay, you know, no tea, no shade. Like, this is a sketchy, difficult topic, to tackle uh, because uh, the division that is out there regarding this particular person. But I thought, okay, well, this is a sign that it arrived really on this day. It meant something because it was supposed to arrive much later on. I was like, okay, then I, I got to do it. I can't shy away from it. You know what I mean? So I went there. I went for it. I went all the way in. I hope you appreciate it. Um, this video is probably going to be quite divisive in terms of viewership who's going to I'm psychologically prepared for all sorts of comments in the comment section down below but please do leave them comment something and uh, I hope we can keep it clean and nice and polite and friendly um, juicy goosey but um, you know what I mean Robert says best timing ever for the review bravo thank you so much Robert uh, Melly says you are amazing to do this review today seriously hello thank you so much Melly listen uh, you know at the end of the day we could be sketchy and shady and all you want and there's going to be the pro side and the and the, the cons and it's going to be who's for him who's against him there's going to be people who are pro Joe Biden who are against Joe Biden all I want at the end of the day is for people to have enough money to put food on their table, to live a comfortable life, to have a home, to have a roof up, up above their heads, to have free education, to be allowed the human rights of decency, to go to school, to be educated, to have food, to have that safety. I'm not saying everybody should live in marble castles. I don't think anybody should. I'm just saying that happiness, just, just that the feeling of safety is what allows, and this is this is the actual point I wanted to get to in this video. Once you do reach a point where in society 
the population does have food every night on their table, do have health insurance that they can afford that makes them feel safe, do have a roof above their heads, do have education that they can afford, that's when that type of emotion and feeling of safety triggers or unlocks your heart. And only when your heart is unlocked can you love. And I think when it comes to the United States of America in particular, but not just, these past four years have been difficult all over the world. Populism is a slippery slope, let me tell you. And uh, it's been hard, okay. Uh, it's been hard, very divisive, uh, irritable and irritating. And so many people have lost that key to their hearts. They're locked away behind such thick, impermeable metal together with stone walls and cages and doors uh, and shrines and, and they do not love anymore. They just do not love anymore. So I just wish for a world where people know how to love and actually can love where people allow others to love them, where people allow themselves to love others, where people allow themselves to be loved by others. It's so much easier said than done. And actually, I've noticed lately, it's not even said enough. I don't think anybody really says it enough. Uh, in these past years, very few people spoke about love, really. Unconditional love. I'm not saying... Love only the ones in your faction. Love only the ones who have your political views. Forget the political views. Love has nothing to do with politics. Nothing. Politics kill love, actually. Uh, love is something that goes <laughs> so much higher. Love, actually, if love is present, this is the point. When love is present, there is no need for politics anymore. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you have, please do thumb it up and let me know what you think about this topic, this perfume, if you've tried it out, or any other of his perfumes for that matter, uh, in the comment section down below. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Super Dakeball Spelled Together. Push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today and get extra perks in the Fashion Bunker. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco All Spelled Together, where videos come most of the time before they hit YouTube. And a lot of the videos there are actually exclusive uh, and never come to YouTube. The exclusive videos are also within the member community, tier two and higher. So, you guys, thank you so much for my lovely, lovely co-reviewers in the chat uh, of Active Stories, Helen, David, Lucas, G, Melly, Jack, uh, Jam, MK, uh, Rich Mitch, uh, my gosh, there's so many, Antigone, Gurcharan, oh my gosh, the, the, the chat is just scrolling. Thank you everybody so much. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, Helen says, already finished oh bye bye thank you <laughs> never give up on love Melly says I'm telling you you guys that's the point I end every video since like the inception of it all every video ends with never give up on love and I think I mean there have been very emotional videos in the past that I've done where it was really very it's always suited to always repeat it to never stress enough and to repeat it always never give up on love but today is a special day where we really, really should stop for a second and just analyze those words and understand what they mean. To never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.